All right, so I'm Mike and I'm at the clearing, which is, um, I'll put a link in there and it's a, it's a folk school and they teach all kinds of really cool stuff to adults. People come here and stay for a whole week um, and they get lodging and meals and everything else. It's a really, really cool place. Anyhow, so I teach some woodworking classes here from time to time. And then, uh, but we also have a project that I did here or helped with. And uh, I just want to take a look at that. It has to do with whether or not this I-beam concept would work here as well. So let's just go see what we might find. Okay, so once you come into the grounds, um, and I'll show, the, show you what basically what you're doing is you're going to a gravel road. They have these signs, directional signs, that give you an idea of where everything is. So Ellison Bay, the campus, etc. But what they did was they made these signs out of, they, they you had older signs before, but put in very, very heavy concrete pads. Then in their metal shop, they made up these big monster, you know, these are six inches across, uh, quarter inch, three eighths inch steel that hold that on. And then these are barn beams. They were, it was a barn that was donated to them, all the material on the barn. So what we did is they wanted to have these signs that they could make and that would be the directional signs. And so there's a big, huge piece that comes out. And I'm gonna say that's around 36 inches long, something like that. And these were made out of barn beams as well. Now, um, what we did on this is we used threaded tenon on this one. Again, this was a volunteer project, but basically on the end of this beam right here is these are mounted. In fact, I, we used stainless steel, I believe, if not aluminum, I can't remember what we did on that, but either stainless steel or aluminum because they're outdoors all the time, right? So those got mounted onto there. And then on this side, we routered in a mortise. So basically, right if we did it right here, we would mount, mount a router, a mortise, just to match that. And that way, these then, the, the stainless steel or the aluminum, got mounted on here permanently using that upper hole and a lower hole, but the inside hole was threaded with a 3 8 inch. So then on this side, what we did was, uh, in fact, we decided to go double on those because of the cantilever. In fact, that's why this I-beam thing concept might work out. We're not, we're not that we're gonna change them here, but it would work out great for signs like this because, well, I'll, I'll explain that in a second, but basically what we did here is we used two bolts. So we used uh, we probably made out of these, I can't remember, well, we probably made a five hole version, used two to fasten it into there, and then we used two of them to do here. So those bolts go through, and those, I know those are stainless steel. They went through and they go into these, these two holes. Well, that cantilevers and then holds everything up. On here, they did some really cool stuff with the uh, basically what made it look like a tenon, you know, sticking out. They took a piece of metal and then somehow they etched that uh, chevron in there. It really, really looks cool. And it, they let it rust, which is really look awesome. So that's what happened there. There's this sign and there's a couple more like that. Now, here's what happens. If that, we had to go with a double bolt on that one. And because there was such a, a tremendous amount of stress because the, the beam itself has weight to it. So this is why a lot of I-beam stuff came into existence over the years. And you know, again, some guy invented it back in 1849, and there's a reason for that. And that is that it, it has the ability to cantilever, to span larger uh, distances, but it has reduced weight because you don't have solid uh, wood or in case of steel, of course, steel, but, but so you don't have all this wood right in here. Instead, you just have that top piece, the, the bottom, the top flange, the bottom flange, and then the web looking just like this. So would I feel comfortable? Would I have felt comfortable making signs out of this? Absolutely. And in fact, in that case, I don't think we would have even needed the two bolt, but yet we could have because of the size. And then they're also hanging some stuff below it, uh, you know, where you get some steel and some additional weight like that. But would I feel comfortable and I, would it look good? to make a post to use the I-beam for something like this, by all means, I like it a lot, in fact. Now, this has the signs hanging below it, right? 
but if this were just to be a mailbox holder, in fact, I'm going to look at mailboxes, at, uh, rural mailboxes for this kind of concept too, if, for the I-beam, because then you'd have a place on the top to mount the box, which they always, always mount them on the top, almost always, I think. And then underneath, you can have that typical hanger where you, where they put the newspaper and stuff like that. And then in the middle here, this would be ideal for the address, like the numbers. Um, and I think I'm gonna take a, definitely take a look at that concept because we need a new bell, mailbox as well. But that would look really, really cool. And again, it would have all the strength in the world. Here you could use like a cedar. In fact, on this one, um, this is one where I did do a, th a triple lamb. So there's a, there's a black walnut right there, quarter inch, black walnut, quarter inch. And then the inside was, I don't know, ash or cedar or something like that, right? But uh, that could be done where the outside here, because cedar is really weak. So this could be a cedar on the outside, quarter inch, cedar on the outside, quarter inch. And then on the inside would be, say, treated, would be ideal. And again, I'm going to be doing these a little different. I'm not going to try to make the groove the same size as the piece itself. Instead, there's going to be a three-quarter inch by a quarter inch groove in there. And then there will be a shoulder, basically a tongue, put onto this. So that's how that'll work. And another one of the signs. This one's a brand new one, actually. It's just done. Just you can see the color is a lot lighter. Again, the chevron, two bolts going through to the threaded tendon up there. And that's um, see it's part of a barn bean beam or a piece of cedar. I'm not sure. I think that looks like they must have used cedar on that. There's a lot hanging on there. One, two, three, four, five. And those are doubles. Yeah, so that's a lot of weight on there. But it doesn't have any problem holding it at all. It's a really, really cool setup. And could the I-beam have worked for that? Definitely. So the I-beam, again, would come out here, but you don't have that all that added weight in the center. So it basically would come out and support everything without any problem whatsoever. That's a, that would be a cool application, actually. Well, if we're getting to the exit and one way, then we're probably getting pretty close to the end of the signs. But there's about 10 of those in there at the, 10 of, in this, at the, um, at the clearing. Well, and this one's even a doubler. So you can see it going one direction and then going another direction. We have the exit one way. Then we have the exit also to the schoolhouse different directions of course but and then here because of as rough as this beam was they were still able to get that piece in there and then the way that this is done when you have two of them at a, at a 90 degree to each other is you just offset them a little bit you can either offset the plates like here you can see that this plate is just a little bit higher than this one or you just offset the bolts that are going through either way it works out 